Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about fishing ditches on lakes and exactly what ditches are. I'm going to break it down and explain to you what a ditch is because if you're like me, you didn't realize what a ditch was because that information was not really available. At least I never found that until finally somebody had told me about that and then I went out and tried it and had some success doing it and now I can go out and repeat that success time and time again doing so. So I want to fill you guys in on how what a ditch is and how to fish these ditches and when to fish these ditches. Before I get started, um, I appreciate all of you guys that have taken the time to watch my video and watch my videos and you guys that are still watching the videos. I truly appreciate that. If you guys are a new um, viewer, if you would, if you're not a subscriber to the channel yet, um, please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you guys like the content I'm putting out. If you got any questions, um, comment them back. I'll get back with you as soon as possible. I'm pretty quick at getting back to anybody that comments on my YouTube posts. I like hearing from you guys. I like hearing that, that my content is helping you guys. That helps me focus more on helping um, the people and seeing what my viewers want to see. Okay, so let's jump into ditches. So this first photo here is of Stockton Lake. And then I'm going to be talking about Stockton Lake in, in Missouri is where it's at. It's in eastern Missouri, about uh, middle eastern Missouri, um, almost all the way, not quite to the east side, but not too far. It's about an hour and a half from me here in southeast Kansas where I'm at, around the Columbus, Kansas, uh, Joplin, Missouri area right here. And I want to talk about it because I'm real familiar with it. And I went out um, last spring and did this very effectively it was last March and last April. That's why I want to talk about this because it's just something I did recently, not this year yet. So this first photo here, I'm going to talk about these set of ditches right here. I'm going to talk about, I think there's three of them in there, three or four of them I'm going to talk about right there. I like to fish in the winter and in the early spring. And I like to fish them in the spring as well. We'll get into that. Okay, the second photo is a close-up of the ditches. And the red is the ditches themselves. That is where the ditch runs in there, or it's like an old creek bed that runs through there, or an old creek channel. And the yellow out there, that, that's the main river channel, okay? Anytime you can get a ditch that's close to a main river channel, I have noticed in Missouri anyway, in the Ozarks, that is always a good sign to start with, with those ditches by that deeper water in the wintertime. Now, why is that? That's because those bass can move up and down from that deeper water to that shallower water with not moving very far. And depending on how the wind is blowing and the conditions that day will determine where those fish are exactly in that water column. And like I said, the yellow is the main river channel out there. And then the green is basically, these are highways that these fish use in the winter to go from deep water back into these coves, which are the ditches. They use these ditches as basically look at them and picture them as highways, as you trying to get back and forth and people going back and forth to work, okay? Um, like the, the freeway would basically be your main river channel and then your ditches are your, your side roads that everybody's getting off, kind of like off ramps, kind of picture it like that. Your off ramps, going off and your side roads going into, say, when you get off to go into a gas station, for example. Start picturing it like that when you're looking at a lake and breaking down a map. I know this works really good, Missouri, Missouri to break it down this way, and this has really helped me, and it should help you after you start understanding how to do this. Um, let me see here. Yeah, the green is the path that these fish use to go from deep water back into the coves. Now, these ditches are better if you have wind blowing back in them. Now, why is it better when the wind is blowing? Well, for one, it helps them where they can't see as well. They don't see you as well. And then it is also because it blows the bait fish, but not the bait fish. I've had some people in a video say it don't blow the bait fish. And that is correct. It don't blow the bait fish. It blows the plankton that the bait fish eat back into these coves and then the 
shad follow the bat or follow the plankton back into these coves and the bass follow the shad. And I'll get into that here in a couple other videos. You'll see you want to look for areas where these bass can corral them and pin them back in these coves, these deeper ditches basically. And that you get out in the ditch and you fish out there and use your front facing sonar is a great tool for that guys. That is why the front facing sonar is so crucial right now because it allows you to see these balls of bait and it allows you to see the bass themselves and cast your lures to them. Your A rigs, swim baits, and jerk baits work best this time of year in the winter and early spring to catch these fish, guys. Now, this third photo these ditches here. These are the deeper ditches. These are the kind of ditches I would focus on in the dead of winter time. When the temps are the coldest, your December, your late December, January, and February is in early March. Early March can be, I mean, if it's warm or cold, but when it starts, when it's cold in March and your late February's, focus in these areas that got the deeper ditches and like I pointed out before, the river channel close by there. So the red is the cove and look for the fish out in the middle like i said with the jerk bait and a rig look for them out there in the middle right there and if the wind's blowing in look for them to be corralled back in there and just kind of go around with your live scope and look around for those balls of shad and then the green again is the path they follow to move up and down out of the main channel right there that is your ditch that is what they're moving in and out of now, let's say you don't have the wind. They're still going to be there. They're just not going to be as conjugated. They're not going to be just because when the wind blows, it blows them shad into schools and they school up even more and allows the bass to pick them off easier and schools the bass up more. When the wind's not blowing, it gets a little more difficult and they get a little more spread out. So you got to look around for them some more or look for some brush piles in these types of areas where they'll sit on when that wind's not blowing as much. And now the fourth photo here, guys, these right here are two of my, one of my favorite, I mean, there's two of them there, but the one to the south is one of my favorite places to fish on Stockton Lake itself, no matter the time of the year. And this ditch is better when it gets closer to spring, late February through April. I catch them there as well out in these ditches. I caught some last April. It was colder. Um, April of last year and it was colder out there and I caught them out in that ditch. This was actually the first time I had ever went and fished ditches like this because somebody was explaining it to me. It was actually a kid down on Table Rock and I, I was kind of talking to him when he won the BFL and he was telling me about how he kind of did it. He didn't show me but he was giving me an example and I was like, you know what? And I was out there fishing with a buddy and I've seen some shad or some birds out there. Look for birds is another big thing. That'll tell you where the shad are guys. Look for the birds. I can't remember the exact name of them, but I know they're diving. They're, they're like ducks, and they dive under the water. They're bigger birds, kind of like ducks, and they dive under the water, and they eat those shad. So wherever you see those ducks at, that's where that shad is. And I've seen some right out in the middle of that southern cove there. And I've seen them out in the middle, and I said, you know what? I told my buddy I was fishing with. I said, let's go out there right now. I said, let's go see if I can't find one of these. And the wind was blowing it back in there. The wind was blowing out of the north in the west so it was blowing right into there blowing into that ditch pushing that them shad back in there and bass and i got out there in the middle and then i started seeing individual bass and i would see shad and then i would see two or three bass and i would cast the jerk bait out there and i would start catching them a jerk bait and a swim bait i was throwing a vision 110 jerk bait mega bass and also a 3.5 inch a big hammer out there at them and I started catching those bass and I was like oh wow okay so this is how you properly utilize your front facing sonar guys you can't just go down the bank and try to use it like you traditionally would go fish you gotta use it and you gotta use it and make yourself use it okay that, that's how you're gonna learn it and trying to where us older guys that learn to fish without it get into the problem is you're trying to use it and fish traditionally. You either got to fish traditionally and not look at it or look at it and just focus on it. You can't do both of the two. You're stuck in between there. It's like, which one do I do? And you're just, you just, your head's basically fighting yourself. You just got to make yourself use it, get better with it. And this will make yourself get better with it. Go out 
after you watch this video right now to up until April, depending on what part of the country you're in, and focus in areas like this, look for those birds and go out in the middle there and force yourself to use this, guys. This is how you're going to get better with it. It's not going away, unfortunately, so force yourself to get better with it. Start embracing technology, okay? Now, so this is a shallower ditch. As you can see, they're the contour lines. This is a shallower ditch. The green is the ditch. And the bass use this basically as a highway, like I mentioned, and they move back in there to spawn. So you'll see the purple around those areas, around the banks in there. They like to spawn up in there. When it gets up in the buck brush and the bushes, it's a great area to flip. And then also there's a, like a little creek that runs back in there. Get back in there too when that water comes up. And they're up in the bushes. If the water ain't in the bushes, they'll still be back in these areas spawning. Just look for little bits of cover. And that'll help you locate the bass when you're up in there flipping. And flipping those bushes is really good. Flip them with a big hammer ring or worm, guys. That is deadly. If you've seen any of my videos, that is deadly flipping into the bushes. Um, a 2K jig um, water wolf is also a great jig to flip. They love jigs flipped on Stockton Lake too as well. So um, blue crab is a great color to throw there. And magic bug is a great color to throw in the big hammer we were worm. Now, the red. This is what I'm talking about where you corral the bass. Look for areas where our, the shad can be corralled by the bass, okay? So look back in there and say the wind is blowing in there where that red is, right? It's blowing in there. you got a good wind, 10, 15 mile an hour, you know, even 20 mile an hour. The, the more wind, the better back in these. That's what makes it better. But even a 10 mile an hour wind will do it. If the wind's blowing back into these areas like these, these are basically ambush areas. Just picture this um, like you're pushing, let's say, cattle, for example. You're pushing cattle, and it's basically funneling down. And then once you hit the end of that cove back in there, you got that ditch. And you hit the end of that cove, those, they have nowhere else to go. So that, that's pushing them back there, and they don't want to go too shallow because it's too, you know, the water gets too cold once we get up too shallow. So the shad stay in that area where they're comfortable, but that wind's blowing that plankton in there. So they're eating on that plankton in there, and then that's where these bass ambush them, and they keep them pushed back in there, and they just keep them in there where they can't come out, and that wind keeps them blown back in there. So focus on these areas, and I hope this helps you guys kind of understand this. That's why that video was there, to help you understand what these bass are doing exactly and how to locate them. And after you start doing it a little bit, Start piecing the puzzle together. Look on Navionics web app and see what is similar across the lake. And just start patterning that everywhere. Look at your rock. It's not so much about rock now when you're out in the channels. It's more of map reading now. It used to be you would pay attention to the rock that's on the bank, the rock transitions. But when you're out in the middle like this in the ditch, just that none of that really matters. Maybe just more look at your contour maps. Look at the flatter contours. Was they on the flatter contours? Was they on the deeper contours? Which one are they doing? Find out what um, you know transition these fish are in. And then you can pattern that all across the lake. So now we got all that. And they use all these basically, like I said, they come out of that main river channel. And they use these to move up and down to feed. And then they also use these uh, ditches to move back into spawn. And then they do the same thing coming back out. They do the same thing in the summer. I have found they stay shallower in the summer. You can catch them shallower in the summer than in the winter. The ditch fishing I have found is better in the winter for me. I haven't figured it out yet how to get out there and catch them in the summer with the front-facing sonar. I've got to play around with that more this summer, but I have heard it's pretty much the same thing. You just change your technique up a little bit, throw some more swim baits, not as many jerk baits. The A-Rig, of course, um, if you uh, fish for a while, um, I got a video on that as well. The A-Rig bite shuts off about 55 degrees, so after that point, it's pretty much dead. I mean, you could still catch bass on it, but you're not going to go out and win no tournaments on it after about 55 degrees. So hopefully this helps you guys understand ditches and gives you, if you guys fish Stockton Lake, maybe that'll give you a more understanding of Stockton Lake. And hit these areas. If you're out there, be sure to try to hit these two areas and you should get fish out of these areas. All right, thank you guys.